Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. I'm Sadis and today we're hopping into some Skyrim. I do have the anniversary edition so we're going to have all the creation club stuff and all that that comes with that but I've been wanting to play games that I love on the channel and I wanted to do something alternating with Borderlands 2 so today we're just going to hop into some Skyrim and I hope you guys enjoy. All right guys so I have a bit of an idea for a character here and I thought about this idea actually when I was playing Oblivion on my own time. And I was thinking of playing an Argonian because I never play Argonians. Now my idea was there's an order of Argonians called the Shadow Scales. And they are basically Argonians that are born under the Shadow Sign. And they get taken to the Dark Brotherhood and trained to become an assassin. But here's the twist on that is what I want to do with this character. I want to make it an Argonian that was not born under the Shadow Sign. That wants to be like the Shadow Scales. And I guess kind of admires them. So this whole series, I feel like my Argonian is going to be training to live up to the name of a shadow scale, even though we're not necessarily one. And then by the end of the series, hopefully we will be able to feel like we are truly a shadow scale as far as skill and other things go. So I'm going to go ahead and make this character here. All right, guys, this is going to be my character here. And I'm going to go ahead and name him Goes Unnoticed. My ancestors are smiling at me, Imperials. Can you say the same? Now the thing is here, do we think this guy is a badass or do we think he's dumb? I always thought he was badass, but then when you think about it, if he would have waited, he would have survived probably. And why am I next? That's what I want to know. There's so many people here that should probably die more than me. We don't even know what my crime was. So why me next? Nice and easy. This doesn't make any sense to me, but you know what? You guys do you, I guess. I mean, I'm an Argonian. I'll probably just get, like, respawned at the hist, right? What do you see? Hello, Alduin. Nice to see you again. Don't really know why you saved me here, because I will be your undoing. Alright, let's get out of here. I don't know if we necessarily like any of these people right now. Like, as far as my character goes. I think we're just in it for ourselves. But the thing is, I won't be able to choose who I want to go with until, uh... And who I want to side with on the war until we get to that point. But right now, I think my Argonian is completely focused on getting himself out of here. Because we'll never achieve our goal of becoming as equally skilled as a shadow scale if we don't survive Halgen. And you can see already a couple of these people didn't actually survive. Now, who are we going with? Rayloff or Hadvar? I mean, we go with Rayloff, right? Because Rayloff's the only one we necessarily have talked to. Get me out of these. Looks like we're the only ones who made it. That thing was a dragon, no doubt. Just like the children's stories and the legends. The harbingers of the end times. We better get moving. Come here. Let me see if I can get those bindings off. Bro's yapping. We could have been out of here already. We look pretty good in this armor, though. Honestly. The Stormcloak armor always makes you look a little bit thick, though. Heck yeah, we can get revenge on the lady that wanted to kill us next for some reason. She literally, that was so unwarranted of her. There was no reason for it to be us. Also, what difficulty am I on? I usually like to play an expert. Uh, I feel like above expert, it's a little bit... It just makes everything kind of uh, bullet sponges in a way, if, if you guys get what I'm saying. So expert's a good one for me. Wait, how come I didn't get a sneak attack? I swear I sneak attacked her. Alright, let's just kill this lady. Other guy, I, I don't really care about if you live or die, but... The other lady definitely needs to die. How did she make it to captain, by the way? Because I'm just a prisoner and I'm already annihilating you. Oh, we're also keeping in mind my character has no combat experience. We've just started off our adventure and we are trying to hone our skills, essentially. 
which is, uh, I guess we got it captured on our very first adventure. All right, just a quick background for those of you that don't know the Shadow Scales. I pulled up a wiki page of it. It says the Shadow Scales are an order of Argonian assassins originating in Black Marsh. Argonians born under the sign of the shadow are taken at birth and offered to the Dark Brotherhood, where they are trained in the arts of stealth and assassination. Now, one of the main things that I want for my character, it says here that during contracts, Shadow Scales seek to kill their targets swiftly, and prolonged and torturous kills are generally frowned upon. So... I want to kind of try to set that up if I can. And obviously there is a shadow scale in Skyrim. And I believe the shadow scale in Skyrim is the last living shadow scale. Which we will see him later in the game. So for now, that's just kind of what we're going to work our character towards. We want stealth assassination kind of focus. And I have a couple of skills that I actually do want to try and get as well. Which I will show you guys here in a second. So we're going to be focusing on a little bit of one-handed, because I might use either swords or daggers, most likely, for the stealth assassination, because that would be a quick death for them, especially if we went daggers and just sneak attack one-shot them, as well as bows, because obviously bows are a very useful tool for an assassin. We're going to be using light armor, of course, for this. We're going to be focusing on sneak. I am going to be doing alchemy because I feel like poisons are a good way to focus on killing your target quickly. And I want to do illusion magic because I never use illusion magic, but I feel like it could be really good. Our character, when we set off, what are what is going to be the first thing we're going to focus on? Because like I said, we're a baby adventurer, right? So we don't really have any combat skill except for what we're forced to be... We don't have any combat skill except for the skills that we're forced to use to get out of Helgen, right? Which is why our character is very unskilled, untalented right now. And which is why Hadvar will most likely carry us through this dungeon. Or Hadvar, I mean Rayloff. I always go with Hadvar, so I'm going to be calling him that. Anyways, so you can see here these guys... I mean, I guess I'm still kind of annihilating them, which is a little unexpected. Because I feel like an expert, sometimes it can still be a little bit... They can be a little tanky. Now, I would like to think that my character is from Cyrodiil. And in Cyrodiil, they have the Fighter's Guild, right? They don't have that in Skyrim. So where would we go initially to kind of hone our skills as a warrior? Probably the Companions. But we don't necessarily know about the Companions yet. So maybe our character is just going to try and go on odd jobs and figure that out and once we hear about the companions maybe then that's when we will go ahead and be like hey that's probably somewhere where we can train up our skills so then we'll head that way and see how it goes from there but first we have to survive this dragon attack Done. on the bright side we get to kill this torturer and he has a really good leather hood so i'm gonna go ahead and take that that'll be our first little assassin hood for our character i think that'll be pretty nice it, it is pretty good armor too so it looks way better than the helmet, of course, but we got our HUD now. Now, obviously, Stealth Archer has become a little bit of a meme within the uh, whole Skyrim community. But, like I said, I want to be playing games that I actually enjoy a lot. And I want to play them how I want to play them. And I hope that you guys will enjoy I feel like it'll be more enjoyable that way. Instead of me doing what I think people want to see. Because I feel like when you try to do what people want to see. Instead of what you enjoy. It becomes more of like a, a work project. Than, a, than an actual enjoyment to play. So that's why I'm just going to go with what I usually go for. I mean I like to play a bunch of different play styles. But one of my main play styles. Since I even started playing video games. Whether it's a modern game or a fantasy game. Is either... Sniper or a archer. And I love stealth. I've always loved stealth. Me and my dad grew up playing uh, stealth games together, like Splinter Cell and stuff like that. So it really just kind of, that's why it translates to me better. And I think it's more enjoyable because it does remind me of those times. And it's kind of how I, how I was raised playing video games. Like stealth was just always cool to me. So that's what we're going to be going for. We are going to have a little bit of a 
cool mix though, I think, because we are going to be trying to get a couple insta-kill dagger assassinations if possible. I don't want to just do archery assassination because I think it'll be more challenging for myself if I go ahead and try to get some dagger kills as well. And we're going to be trying out some illusion magic too because it's something that I think would go really well with the character as well as I think it would be interesting for me because it's something I never use. Now I have no idea where Rayloff went but we're just going to get out of here. Like, like I said my character really doesn't care about anyone but themselves at this point. Maybe that'll change in the future. Maybe my character will get married. Maybe we'll have a child. Who knows? But for now, my character's locked in on survival and self-preservation, so we're getting out of here. Wait. Looks like Rayloff caught up. There he goes. Looks like he's gone for good this time. No way to know if anyone else made it out alive. But this place is going to be swarming with Imperials soon enough. We better clear out of here. My sister, Gerder, runs the mill in Riverwood, just up the road. I'm sure she'd help you out. It's probably best if we split up. Good luck. I wouldn't have made it without your help today. I love the fact that they say split up, but then he follows you the whole way to Riverwood. I'm just going to go off on my own at this point, and we are going to be collecting some flowers as well as some other things. I know we're going to run into Rayloff again because I'm going to be going down to the Guardian Stones and all of that stuff. But I don't really care right now. I'm just kind of going to go off on my own. If we happen to meet up again, then it is what it is. But the first thing my character probably wants to do is get rid of this Imperial Armor because clearly it's going to be very noticeable if that's the kind of thing that I'm wearing. But, for now, we're just going to try to kill some bandits, because I do remember this camp being up here. I don't know if Rayloff's going to join in this fight, or if he was already too far away, but... You can see here, these guys are coming for me. And, sadly, you don't get to make a class in this game like you do in Oblivion, which I think is a big downside, because... The classes that you can start with, like, let's say in Oblivion, you chose to be good at illusion or it's one of your major skills you're not necessarily good at it but okay buddy chill out but if you were to start with illusion as a major skill in oblivion then you would get to start with an illusion spell which i think is really nice but we are as i said a baby adventurer so technically we don't even know much to begin with. We just have what we have for help from Helgen. So we're going to drop off this Imperial armor here and just uh, pretend maybe this was an Imperial soldier that got killed. Maybe jump by bandits and stuff. But that's not us. We just have fur armor now. Unless one of these guys had better stuff. Studded armor is actually way better, so let's take that. And a hunting bow. Okay, a little bit of an upgrade here. Now, this is vanilla Skyrim. I do tend to play Skyrim vanilla most of the time, and I know that's crazy to a lot of people because a lot of people feel like they can't play Skyrim vanilla. But eventually, I might do a modded series. I, I don't really know. It's just not something I normally do. But I was also thinking about doing a series eventually. Oh, whoops. I was thinking about doing a series eventually where maybe every episode we add a mod or something. I think that could be cool. But obviously we'd have to test them, right? Because some mod might just crash my game. But anyways, enough of that. Let's get to the Guardian Stones. We'll choose which one we want. And then we'll make our way towards Riverwood. Now, the closest thing, obviously, we weren't born under the Shadow sign. But I think my character is going to take the Thief sign because... Having the Blessing of the Thief wouldn't be so bad if you're going to be an assassin because they're similar skill sets. And I've decided I'm going to forego the mine for now because if my character is not good at fighting roleplay wise, I don't think we should go fight the mine yet. I think we should look for some odd jobs and do those before we fight anything big because I just feel like as far as our character goes, it probably makes the most sense. Now, I will say our character probably has some form of background using 
a bow, whether it's to hunt or something maybe with his father when he was younger or something like that. But I think I don't want to do alchemy until we actually train at an alchemy place because maybe we take a piece of training from an alchemist and that kind of piques our curiosity. So then we start doing it on our own. I think that'll be the best way to kind of reel it in on the role play scenario because... I don't know if people just do alchemy right off the bat, like, good anyways, and you can't really fail potions in this game, can you? Doesn't it kind of tell you? I don't know. We'll have to test it out regardless, but I think it would make the most sense if we did it in a way where we got training first. You'll see. It was a dragon. It'll kill us all, and then you'll believe me. That line always cracks me up. What the... What are you doing, dude? Alright, after a quick little meeting, a little rendezvous with Rayloff and Gerder, now she wants us to go tell Jarl Balgriff about the dragon, but we're going to hold off on that for a little bit. Also, why are these cabbages free? Uh, okay. What do you pick up there? Oh, I wish I saw that first. You're so lucky. Heck yeah, I'm lucky. Just, uh, you snooze, you lose, kid. You gotta be quicker than that, alright? As far as my character picking up alchemy ingredients, I, just, I do want to kind of address this. I do think my character knows that they want to do alchemy, they just don't know how yet. So, maybe our character just carries a little pouch around full of alchemy ingredients for the day that he learns. Because who knows what's going to be good for poison or not. And uh, we have the, our goal set out in mind. We know what we want to do long term. We just don't know the journey it's going to take to get there. Well, one of us has to do something. I said no. No adventures, no theatrics, no thief chasing. Well, what are you going to do then, huh? Let's hear it. We are done talking about this. Oh, <clears throat> a customer. <laughs> Sorry you had to hear that. All right. Uh, what was that about? I don't know what you overheard, but the Riverwood Trader is still open. Feel free to shop. Uh, yeah, we, we did have a bit of a, a break-in, but we, we still have plenty to sell. Robbers were only after one thing. An ornament. Solid gold in the shape of a dragon's claw. Hmm. This seems like... Fighting bandits seems a little tough for a first job, but maybe I could help get the claw back? You could? I've got some coin coming in from my last shipment. It's yours if you bring my claw back. Now, if you're going to get those thieves, you should head to Bleak Falls Barrow, northeast of town. Yes. So now you don't have to go, do you? Oh, really? Well, I think your new helper here needs a guide. Uh, no, I... By the eight, fine. But only to the edge of town. Alright, well, we need money for new equipment anyway, so let's go. We'll treat this as our first kind of contract, I suppose. Like, when we become a Dark Brotherhood assassin, or at least our dreams being fulfilled of becoming one, we're going to have to face dangerous scenarios and try to figure out how to solve them. So this is kind of a good learning point for my character, but at the same time... Seems a little ta a tad bit dangerous for us, but got to start somewhere. To go th those thieves must be mad hiding out there. Those old crypts are filled with nothing but traps, trolls, and who knows what else. All right. Um, does that make me crazy for going there to help you? Also, why did you stop? Come on, let's go. Figures, you always got to rely on yourself. Can't rely on anyone to help you. She's just standing there. I don't think that's the edge of town, but you do you. Maybe she got cold feet and she got scared. I don't know. I would say maybe our character traveled from Cyrodiil and we traveled with a merchant caravan, possibly. So we are... We do know to be careful for wolves such as these. And like I said, we, our character does have maybe a little bit of hunting experience as far as growing up. So, it's not overly bad to fight wolves. 
you think they would have started us with a rat mission in this game like every other RPG, but I suppose not. The mountain's awfully cold for an Argonian. Looks pretty great, though. All right, we got a tower up ahead. What does this mean for us? We see bandits on the horizon, or possibly bandits. We don't necessarily know yet, but considering that we've already been informed that bandits were at Bleak Falls Barrow, and this is a watchtower for that place, we can only assume that they are bandits, and I'd rather not let them get the drop on me before I find that out. And like I said, we really only care about ourselves, and if we want to become an assassin, I don't think we're necessarily worried about morals of things. Heck yeah. Hopefully I can at least pick one off before they get here. Oh shoot, they, I hate when they stop running. Okay, I am failing. But uh, I'm, I'm totally failing because it's my character, you know? We're not good yet. So that's, just pretend that that's why I'm failing. Or don't even pretend that, I'm totally doing it for the roleplay. What? Dude, how am I missing? This is actually going horribly. Our character needs to get better. It's definitely not me, I swear it. Dude, this bandit's tough. How many arrows I gotta hit you with, lady? Jeez. Alright, well, at least we managed to survive our first combat away from having backup. This is our first combat alone. And nobody knows, nobody lived to tell the tale of how bad I was, so it doesn't necessarily matter. There could be stragglers. You would have thought that they would have rushed outside to help if there were stragglers, but maybe with the blizzard it kind of muffled the sounds of fighting. Okay, but we do have someone up here. Looks like an orc that's wearing heavy armor, although he does have a light shield, which... Let's just try to kill him before he rushes us. Do I even have a melee weapon anymore? Shoot. The bad thing about Skyrim is you can't really dodge. Oh, we managed it, we managed it. I would say we could camp here for the night, but... Nighttime's the best time to party. And by that I mean to stealthily assassinate all the bandits that will be there. And hopefully the cover of night and this blizzard will give me the ability to actually make it through at my skill level. Especially with how those first archery fights were going. Alright, so I see one bandit up there. I would like to think our character's pretty smart. Um, when it comes to planning things out. Whether that translates to me in real life is going to be hard to say, but I would like to scout first to see where everyone is. Or how many bandits there are in general. I don't think we have things like detect life in this game, which is a little bit sad, but it's fine. We'll figure it out. Mysticism is not a thing. We have another bandit. So those two bandits we've seen. Oh, I can actually sneak up this way? Why did I never know this? Now, I, I know I have a dagger on me. Let's drop these Imperial Swords, because that might indicate to other people that we've killed some Imperials. That's definitely not something that I want them to know. So, our sneak is definitely not good enough to one-shot... Or, we can't even sneak up on these people with a dagger yet. And I think it just makes sense for a character at a low level to use a bow instead because we're more afraid and timid than we would be if we were kind of battle hardened. That bandit just healed. Okay. Didn't know they did that in this game. Let's, uh, I mean, we could try the dagger out, but oh, shoot. Like I said, we're not going to be really the greatest melee fighter. We just have to try and kill them before they kill us. That's really all we're hoping for. Make sure we can get out with enough 
of our life left where we can just rest at the tavern and be good after. Obviously, our character might have to take a little bit of a longer rest the more hits we take, but we're really just trying to get out with our lives, not necessarily make it a clean mission or anything right now because I don't think that's going to happen when you have a character that's not very skilled. Come on, peek me. Got him. Let's see if we can get some intel on these people before we start firing. Because intel gathering is also something that's important when you're an assassin. Okay, so we now know that there's another bandit that went further ahead, possibly to steal the loot. But that's fine with us because they got split up, which helps us a lot. You guys will have to let me know if you want me to play on Master or not. Like I said, Expert's really my, my preferred difficulty, but if I play on master and try it and it's too much for me then i can just switch back probably won't be as bad with a stealth archer kind of build but we'll see how it goes you guys will just have to let me know in the comments lots of spider webs here definitely kind of foreshadowing a little bit and sometimes you have to watch your prey because they might just end up taking themselves out, especially in a place like this, where traps are plentiful. Not only does that give us information that the trap is there, but it also took care of our enemy for us. So as we can see, this guy wasn't very perceptive of the glyphs around. So it is clearly snake snake and then the whale because the snake fell off the middle there not too hard to guess but i suppose a bandit's not too smart why did the nords make these so easy to guess uh why, like why would you put the combination right above the door doesn't seem to make sense to me but i will never understand the ancient nords So obviously we could only assume that this character is the bandit that we heard getting talked about at the front. So obviously we know not to trust this guy right off the bat. Because our character is a smart character. Not sure how our character would feel about this massive spider. I would like to think our character might have grown up in Black Marsh and then maybe they move into Cyrodiil. Uh, maybe, I don't know, 13 years probably. Which would probably have caused him to see a great deal of things probably far worse than this spider. I don't know what kind of creatures they necessarily have in Black Marsh, but I'm sure there's much worse than a giant spider. Alright, spider, meet your fate. did it you killed it now cut me down before anything else shows up where's the golden claw bandit yes the claw i know how it works the claw the markings the door in the hall of stories i know how they all fit together help me down and i'll show you you won't believe the power the nords have hidden there hand over the claw first does it look like i can move you have to cut me down first i mean i could cut your hands out and you could give me the claw but the thing is we already know not to trust him because he abandoned his so-called friends at the start, which means I am going to do a little bit of pre-battle preparations here. And by that, I mean we're about to use some poison on this dude. So, let's go ahead and grab our dagger. 
And I suppose I need to cut him down, apply the poison. It's coming loose. I can feel it. Right now. Okay. I kind of want to use the paralysis poison on this guy because it'd be funnier. You fool. Why should I share the treasure with anyone? I love how he said, you fool, as he was paralyzed on the ground. Nice job. I don't think I'm a fool, buddy. And anybody with eyes can figure out this claw puzzle. All right, now my character's never been in an ancient Nordic ruin before. And I see the corpses, but I'm not necessarily going to engage them because we don't necessarily know that they're going to come alive. Being smart and having knowledge are two different things, so... I don't think my character would necessarily know about them. I mean, obviously the undead is pretty common in the Elder Scrolls kind of lore but at the same time like i said okay we don't really know about them until obviously we are happened upon by them okay uh i'm gonna need to get my dagger out here oh no they're all waking up it's just not good i actually don't know if i will survive this fight hold up we might actually sir i'm gonna i'm gonna go like this dodge to the side please Okay, that's one down. That's one down. Follow me, buddy. Can you die, please? Over here. Ooh. Ooh. Just gotta use your wits. Keep your wits about you and you'll survive. And now that our character knows that these dudes are alive. Survival. And self-preservation means that I have no worries about murdering these dudes while they sleep. Except I do need to run, because this guy is very strong. Come on, buddy. I just gotta make sure I'm back far enough. No. Huh? Wait. Oh, shoot. Do you guys see what's happening right now? Fireball! I'm dying. Do we have potions? Resist cold? Okay. Do you you guys see what's happening, right? Okay, okay. Go, go, go. Oh my gosh. Dude got home run through that. Dude, the battle axe was on the pressure plate causing it to not reset the trap. That was... <laughs> I've never seen that happen before. Anyways... Our character, I'm not going to use the healing spell because I don't think my character necessarily would know a healing spell. Maybe it's something they would look for in the future, but we do have our regen ability if we need it, the Hiss skin. We're just going to go ahead and equip that while we're at it and uh, try and assassinate some of these Draugr before they actually are able to stand up. I would like to be able to kill some of them before they make it to me. I think I need to lick my wounds here for a second. Traps? I feel like our character's probably pretty nimble, so it's probably not something that worries them much. You know what does worry my character is a, an undead warrior rushing me with a battle axe. I don't know if that's, uh... <laughs> I don't know if that's something that pro adventurers get used to, but... My character is definitely not used to it. Goodbye, sir. Man, when you're not using healing spells and stuff, Bleak Ball's Barrow actually can do some damage to you, I'm discovering. Why am I missing these? Dude, I'm horrible. Dude's got a Warhammer. Couple things my character won't be doing is probably blacksmithing. Or, I don't know though, because like, when you think about preparation, somebody that's super, super prepared for things, maybe they would learn blacksmithing for themselves to make sure they always had the best gear. And enchanting is definitely something that they would probably learn if they were already dipping into a little bit of magic. But we'll see as time goes on, we'll kind of decide what we want to lean into. Because they do have a bit of a plan, right? Like... 
a rough outline. I think my character is eventually going to wander over to the College of Winterhold to try and learn some illusion magic. So basically it's all going to be adding up to the final product of my character being a Dark Brotherhood assassin. So like I said, rough outline real quick. First, learn basic fighting skills via companions and odd jobs around for people. Learn stealth skills by maybe wandering upon the Thieves Guild and doing some jobs for them. Learn illusion magic by going to the college and basically gear up along the way and see what we can get. And I think, I don't know, I feel like it could be an interesting concept for a character and that's kind of what I'm going for. So hopefully you guys are excited for this and we will be playing through fully this time. Last time I started a Skyrim series, we did not actually complete the series, but it's because my outlook on the channel was all wrong. I need to play games that I enjoy and I need to have fun and I need to not worry necessarily about views and stuff like that because I feel like that's kind of just ruins stuff for you, you know? And I've always thought like, oh, if I don't, if I play something that's not getting views on the channel, it's going to ruin like my chances or something like that. But I really think the best way to go about it is to play things I love, attract people that love the things I love. And I really think that's the best for longevity of the channel and really just for me having fun. Because if I'm not having fun, then you guys aren't going to have fun. And I really just want this to be... I want this to be fun. I want it to be somewhere where I have people to talk to about the things I enjoy and I get to show my friends, which is you guys, the things I enjoy and the fun that I have while playing the things I enjoy and discovering the things that you guys enjoy about things like Skyrim and stuff like that. Cause I do also enjoy, which is why I like streaming a lot as well. I do actually enjoy seeing people's viewpoints on things and that's why streaming is really fun because i can i can stream a game that i would never play on my own and have so much more fun because i see how much joy that people have for things like subnautica for example i don't know if i could play through that whole thing on my own but i did play through it all, the whole thing on stream and i had a lot of fun doing it so i really just need to change my mindset about a lot of things because if I have the mindset of having fun and making some friends along the way, then I think that's the best way to do it. And I've been thinking about this for a, quite a while. I did end up picking up an ancient Norbo, kind of almost forgot to do that, but I do have one now. So we have the best bow we can have at this point in time. I've been wanting to fully play through Skyrim on the channel as well, because like I said, it is one of my favorite games of all time. And I just think it's fun to show off what I love. Now, one thing I do need to know from you guys is if you want to see a lot of side quests or if you want to see the main faction quests only, it's kind of like how I'm doing Borderlands. I'm not showing really any side quests on Borderlands except for the super, super interesting ones, um, at least to, in my opinion. So you guys will just have to let me know kind of how you feel about the whole Skyrim thing. Now... As far as Skyrim side quests and all that go, I think there's a lot more to them than like a Borderlands side quest. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I have a lot of fun playing these games. I hope you guys have a lot of fun watching me play them and maybe inspire you to play kind of play them for yourself. I love when people discover something that I love for the first time. Obviously, a lot of people know Skyrim and Borderlands, but sometimes you get to play a game where, or even like a game that, oh shoot, a game that a lot of people have played, but then someone wanders along and they've never played, okay, we're going to have to bow this guy. Uh, they've never played it before and you kind of get to hear about their first experience, which I think is a lot of fun because I wish I could have a lot of the first experiences again. Okay, uh, let's let's be careful here. Come on, buddy. Stop strafing me. I'm not good enough. My skills have waned. Oh, 
Luckily, Skyrim enemies are kind of easy to cheese. Oh, shoot. He actually hit me there. My bad. I shouldn't talk crap, I guess. I think that was my last arrow. I have one iron arrow left. Okay, we're going to sell that great sword. All right, guys, we've made it back to Riverwood. We're going to go ahead and give them this claw, even though it's pretty late. The shop's not going to be open, but I would like to sell stuff. And I'm allowed to come in here because of the quests, I believe. You're back from Bleak Falls. Did you find anything? Wait, I can go to a shop? Odds and ends. That's I didn't think I'd be able to. It's nighttime. Heck yeah. Anyways, let's go ahead and sell some of the stuff we don't need. All right, buddy, I got the golden claw back for you. You found it. <laughs> there it is. Strange. It, it seems smaller than I remember. <laughs> Funny thing, huh? I'm going to put this back where it belongs. I'll, I'll never forget this. You've done a great thing for me and my sister. All right, there we go. First quest complete. I don't know why they say it seems smaller than he remembers. I always wonder if it's... Maybe because the claws break off inside the key. So much for but, I don't know. I always thought about and I was curious of that. All right. With that being said, guys, this is where we're going to wrap up the first episode. Like I said, I hope you guys are excited for this series because I'm pretty excited, especially doing the illusion magic and everything. I get to see what illusion magic's like in Skyrim. It's something I've never really done. And I'm pretty hyped for it. I think I like the whole layout that I thought of for my character. And if you guys have any ideas to add on to it, let me know. And if it sounds like a good idea, I might actually incorporate it into my character as far as the roleplay stuff goes. So, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. If you have any comments about it down below, just make sure you leave me a comment and let me know about it. If you guys did enjoy this episode, please leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And make sure you ring that bell so you don't miss out on those future episodes. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And I will see you guys next time. Have a good day, guys.